Hey guys, Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. Good evening to you. Hope you're having a great day today. <laughs> uh, let me get into my report real quick. I do have a Euro snowfall run on the very top, and I have the GFS snowfall run right below that, right above my head. Now, as far as that big storm that we have in the Northeast, matter of fact, two storms that's going to be hitting the Northeast. Go to my channel for my video this morning from Friday morning, and I say that because I won't upload again after this one until after sabbath on saturday evening i do celebrate mine on saturday so god bless all of you that do celebrate saturday sunday praise the lord every day guys but go see that video uh, that i did this morning friday morning uh, that way you can see what's going on with those two snowstorms that's going to be hitting the midwest as well as the northeast as both of them is going to impact it this video is going to be a little bit different uh, as well as the southern snow snowstorm this is going to be bringing a little bit more information uh, towards the end of it. It looks like we're going to be having some pretty serious conditions going on pretty soon, guys. So if you've never been here before, hit that subscribe button. I upload every day. My name is Mark. How you doing? <laughs> but now we do have some pretty serious conditions going on, and I do see them starting on Thursday, guys. Literally on the evening of the 10th, right before the 11th morning on Thursday, I do see that we do have a big problem that is going to start, and Euro's picking it up, GFS is picking it up. It's pretty much starting with Mexico. All these low pressure systems are going to be shooting up from Mexico for a while. We are going to have high pressure setting up, blocking things, putting things in motion. Now here we are, GFS, on Thursday, on the 11th. Uh, you do see that you have a low pressure system start to build up uh, around Texas somewhat, a little bit of New Mexico. You do have one off the coast of South Carolina that's been hanging out for a while there's a lot of high pressure setup that really stopping these systems from moving and when you just get a few more hours throughout throughout the day and freezing rain was already setting up earlier that morning but we still have the system but now the little pressure system off the coast is starting to uh, build up and get stronger so now we're starting to get one on both sides and the euro is picking this up as well uh, matter of fact it's not showing it as strong for an upper level low but it is showing some cyclonic activity now you see how these low pressure systems just keep coming up that's going to be happening for a while now that's going to be our steady pattern guys especially with a high pressure blockage from the west we're going to have high pressure blockage from the east blockage from the north with the arctic air coming down on that polar air mass and then eventually it's just going to take over the whole country but you can see here on thursday that we we have storms building up, okay? Now, well, we're going to have some low-pressure systems moving around, and GFS picked one up there, so that means there is some activity that's going to be off the coast. But if you remember now, low-pressure systems move counterclockwise. High-pressure systems move clockwise, at least on this side of the equator. So as these low-pressure systems are moving up, they're also going to be swirling this warm moisture that's in the Gulf of Mexico, and it's going to be bringing it up through the states. Now, actually, I'm showing that we're going to be sitting right here for a while, uh, right over Colorado, a little bit of, of Wyoming, as far as this low pressure system where it's going to hang out. And it's going to be blocked there and hanging out for a while. And now it is bringing precipitation its way and the cold air is coming down. So this is going to create a pretty massive effect. Now, if you look at the temperatures of Thursdays, right, right before noontime, it's nice high 60s and it's bringing way up high. But with the wind chills, it's gotten really a lot colder and with the precipitation coming up from the dew points let me show you the dew points with the precipitation coming up from these dew points and we're talking high 60 dew points all the way from texas all the way to florida and this is going to be the trend for a while uh during that week and when this when it's, this, these dew points come up with this moisture meeting this arctic air uh with the low pressure systems sucking it up and also low pressure systems over here are sucking it up to the northeast it's going to be raising all this, this precipitation and warm air uh, north into the country. So when this meets up, there's going to be a freezing line. And this will be the effect by Thursday on that one time slot. There's going to be some, some freezing uh, ice and some freezing rain that is going to be laying down in the country. And it's going to get worse. Now as you move into Friday, you can see that the system finally formed up with all the heat all the moisture got some convective activity we got a low pressure system upper level low 1007 right over mississippi now this is still swirling so you got a picture of this swirling you got a picture of this low pressure over here still swirling for 24 hours now matter of fact it's gonna be swirling there maybe even a, a few days i wouldn't say a week because they're probably going to swap out but there's gonna be a lot of low pressure systems swirling over there creating a lot 
of snowfall for possibilities for Oklahoma, Kansas, Nebraska. But on the north end of, of the east coast with this system, it's going to be bringing a lot of freezing rain because all this precipitation is getting sucked up from the Gulf and is going to the northeast. And it's getting pushed to the northeast because it's high pressure. The Arctic air, the polar air mass is high pressure and it's covering the whole north uh, <laughs> the whole north side of the country is just covered in high pressures. And as this comes in, that's going to get pushed out. So it is going to go this way towards the northeast. And this is a lot of rainfall. This is a lot of precipitation. And it's going to bring snow. It's going to be rainfall. And this isn't the northeast snowstorm. I did that this morning. You can go watch that. This is different. This is going to be on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. But as you can see, the system moves up. It starts gaining some strength. It's swirling. It's bringing the moisture up. And you can see the good temperatures. It's bringing all the way up to Ohio. Even West Virginia is going to be in 36, 37, 38 degrees. So there's going to be a lot of warm temperatures and a lot of moisture that's going to be coming in this area. And with the wind chill, it's going to be well cold enough to freeze this precipitation. Because it's literally on the line of the precipitation. It's definitely going to be cold enough with the winds. And with the dew points, it definitely has enough precipitation to cause problems as far as snowfall, freezing rain, whatever it is. You need cold air, you need precipitation. Well, you got both. And they're meeting together, kind of colliding. You got the cold air coming down. You can see all the dry air coming down with it. And you got a precipitation coming up. It's, with the cold temperatures, it's going to be a bad factor. And this is your outcome for Friday on the 12th. You have a whole bunch of widespread freezing rain. And it's going to get worse. Now, by Friday evening, the high pressure system has moved all the way in good. You can see it way out here. It's moving all these storms off to the east coast. It's moving this low pressure system off to the northeast. Okay, so it's going to be a low problem in the northeast with some snowfall with that. You still have this low pressure system over Colorado, and it's still been sitting there, and we're talking a couple of days now. Well, here we are on Saturday morning. We have all this precipitation from all this dew points, all this warm, moist air going up into the northeast. We have all this Arctic air coming down from the northwest, and it's going to freeze all that. And you have this low pressure system still over Colorado, swirling counterclockwise, uh, bringing the moisture up into the cold air and dropping snowfall. I'm telling you this because when you see the snowfall rates, you're going to want to know where that snow came from. Now you get a good shot here of the pressure systems of what's setting up uh, for that Friday. And you can see how you got a big high pressure off the east coast. You got a big high pressure off the west coast. And you got the big high pressure in the north covering the whole north. But the polar air mass uh, section of the high pressure is coming down. So all this, these low pressures that keep feeding from, from Mexico and coming north into our country... They either have to go east or they have to go west because they're getting split by this high pressure system. And this one over Colorado is still sitting there and it's been three days now. And it's just steady swirling, moisture, precipitation. It could be a, a, a bigger issue than just snow or freezing rain. We could have actually a flood uh, problem because people have been in drought for so long. And by Saturday evening, here's the ice that you do have all the freezing rain, all the ice, this is ice accumulation that you're going to be having for this country. And it's going to start building up even more. And you're getting the worst of it uh, in, in northern Virginia because these, these storms are shifting east, northeast from the high pressure pushing it down and out. Here it is on Sunday. Monday. Now, before I show you the totals for that you're going to get for these snowfalls and ice, let me explain a little bit to you why you're getting what you're getting. Now, if you can see here, this is on the 7th. This is right before your northeast snowstorm you're all about to have. This is your low pressure system that is going to be going up there, giving you all the snowfall. This is the first low pressure system that's moved up from Mexico. It's getting locked. It's getting locked into Colorado right now. And it's going to be getting locked in on the west coast also from another high pressure. And here's another shot with the GFS just confirming it, that it will be locked in with your low pressure system on the east coast, going to the northeast, giving snowfall. And you still got your low pressure system locked in here with Colorado, with your high pressure, with your freezing temperatures, coming on down pretty good and riding the jet stream out. Now, by Monday, the high pressure system is starting to move in really good here and has moved out y'all storm for the northeast. 
and this system is still locked in place. <laughs> as a matter of fact, it's growing in moisture because it's blocked on the west coast as well for a while. And these low pressure systems are still coming up north. They have nowhere else to go. And by Tuesday, you still got the high pressure system sitting in the same spot. You got the high pressure uh, system building uh, over Canada and trying to control the whole northern side. Because it already has the Atlantic and it has a, a pretty good one in the west. It's 1,018 millibars. It's a pretty good dam. But you still have multiple low pressure systems building up now for the southwest. And this one been here all week. And by Wednesday, that low pressure system tries to come back because the high pressure system squeezed in, killed this low pressure system in Canada. And it's trying to come back. It has a little bit more room, but it's going to be a little too late. Maybe a little bit for Maine. That's a possibility. But the high pressure system is still coming into our country. And here comes that Arctic air, the second bounce that we're going to have. And this second, <laughs> this low pressure system is still sitting over Colorado. And here's a good look a little higher up so you can see all of North America and how crazy it's kind of becoming. You can see the high pressure system off the East Coast. You can see the high pressure system off the West Coast. So this system is locked in place. And the high pressure system coming out into Arctic air just locks everything either West or East. But either way it goes, when it goes West, it's going to be locked from leaving from the high pressure system. And when it goes East, it's going to be locked from leaving. So that could be a good reason why that other low pressure system does bounce back because it's getting blocked. But once again, look at all these low pressure systems either left or right in North America. Everything is literally getting split into a V and just going left or right. Now by Thursday on the 11th, the high pressure system is moving all the way across North Country. That's where it does a, a little bounce north and then it does a little something different. But you still have the low pressure system steady coming up uh, from from Mexico and it is still coming towards the Colorado part. So this this one up here has dissipated, has gotten squeezed out, but it this one is it's refilling the atmosphere. It's just steady. Wherever one's missing, it's going to fill that void. And by Friday on the 12th, it done filled the same exact spot the last one was in, right over Colorado, pretty much Utah. And you see it starts spilling out a little bit off the west coast, but this is a lot of moisture right here. At the same time, we have another one coming up through the Gulf, and this is the one that had the possibility for the southern snowstorm. And remember, guys, this is still past five days. Anything past five days, take with a grain of salt, because as you can see, it does change from day to day. Nobody knows the exact information yet this far out. I'm just showing you these possibilities, keeping you weather aware. High pressure system does have a little trough right around the neutral spot. And it brings a low pressure system either left or right. And it chooses right because it's already got the atmosphere filled to the west. So it goes east. And by Saturday, it's been all in that, all in the, the east coast of the country showing you uh, all that ice that was going to fall. Even the snow that falls before it. And then it breaks off and goes off into the uh, Atlantic. Well, it tries because there is high pressures out there as well doing some blocking. But this is what we have. And then the high pressure system squeezes it off what it has. And we still have precipitation all in here. We still have low pressure systems in, in Mexico, lower Texas. We still have that one low pressure system. It's getting pushed down from Colorado, but it's been there a long time. And on Sunday, on the 14th, the low pressure system comes back because it's blocked by this high pressure over here. So you might have another chance for a, another northeast storm. It's still too far away to be sure. But by this point, the, the system on the west coast can, yay, it can finally leave. But now it's done strengthening to a 999. So what this might outcome, we don't know yet because we haven't had a storm system come from the Gulf and actually go west. That's, that's pretty rare. Now, this high pressure system that came all the way in with this Arctic polar air is sitting well into the country now, and it's going to fatten up. And here is on Monday, a 1044 high pressure. That's pretty good. A 1050 is pretty high, y'all. Now, this is going to be a lot of cold air pushing down, and it's going to be spreading out. As a matter of fact, it's spreading so far out, it's going all the way below Mexico and well into the Bahamas and the Caribbean. Now, y'all not going to be feeling no freezing temperatures, but I do know a couple temp degrees temperatures difference for y'all will be a lot different because y'all are acclimated to that warm temperature, so it will feel a lot colder for you. But you can see how it covers the whole atmosphere, and there ain't no systems that can come in and when this thing's here. It even pushed out the one up northeast, and it went all the way to a 962. So it went out there and got pretty strong. But that is a lot of area. 
So let's get to the snowfall rates. Let's see what the possibilities are for the snow and the ice from this storm, guys. This shot you're seeing now, this is today. This is right now. This is what our country looks like. After we finish with this possibility, that is what our country is going to look like. And this is the reason why I showed you that low pressure system over Colorado because all this snow. Okay, this snow from the northwest, where is that coming from? Okay, we can tell that's a system coming in from the, the Arctic air. But where's all this snow coming from? Well, that came from that low pressure systems that kept building up and kept building up and bringing that moisture up. And then you have it where it dragged all the way across the central U.S. to the northeast and it brought a lot of snowfall as well as some ice. And here's the Euro. The Euro is showing, it's still showing you snowfall for South Carolina, northern Georgia. Uh, but the Euro is showing a lot heavier rates uh, for Kansas, Nebraska. It's showing a lot more snowfall, especially for Missouri uh, and, and Iowa as well. Just everybody in general is showing it's going to be more snowfall. It's because this cold air is really going to freeze up that precipitation. It's really going to get sucked up good with the dew points. And it's just going to feed this system, guys. And look at all this ice. You're talking all the way even lower Texas. South Texas, <laughs> where it's usually hottest, is going to have ice. <laughs> then you got somewhere around Dallas, Texas, all the way, all the way to Rhode Island. Connecticut, Rhode Island, even portions of Maine is going to have a lot of ice. The Euro is showing the same thing except for the ice on southern Texas. But it's showing us all the way from Texas to Oklahoma, all the way to the northeast. It's showing a little bit more northern. So the GFS is a little bit southern, where it's from south Texas all the way to the Connecticut. The Euro is showing as from Oklahoma to Maine. So it's a little bit more northern. But either way, both of them show that this system will push it out. Uh, the high pressure from the to the east northeast and virginia is going to be getting the heaviest part of this ice all right guys so y'all know that i will update this of course i will i'm about to go into our sabbath this afternoon all the way until tomorrow afternoon so i hope you have a very blessed night hope you have a very blessed morning tomorrow and a great day it will be a nice uh, day tomorrow so god bless all of you that are gonna go praise god tomorrow and i used to do it on sunday as well uh, ever since I've done it on Saturday, it's been feeling right. I've been having really blessed Sabbaths, guys. Now, before y'all run off and enjoy y'all weekend, let me bless you and your family. From my family to yours, God bless you. Thank you so much for supporting my channel. We do appreciate everything y'all do for us. We could not be here if not for you. So I want to pray with you. I want to praise God with you. Psalm 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doeth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. God bless you all tonight. I hope you have a great night tonight. Please share this information to people that you see that is in this path. I really don't know who's not in this path. <laughs> but once again, if you haven't come into the Lord, please, guys, if you can't tell, it's in the times. Those who have ears, those who have eyes, you can see the same things I see. All glory does go to God. Amen.